Hey everyone, it is December 6th, Tuesday, 2022, and you're here at the Chaos Community, uh, I'm just like Community Channel. You are on the Community Channel, but this is also the Chaos Community Meeting, our weekly meeting where we just hang out with each other and catch up on what's going on with chaos. Um, I'm the uh, Community Manager. I, I almost forgot what I was for a minute. I'm Elizabeth, and I'm the Community Manager. And um, yeah, it's so really, really great to see everybody here. So minutes are in the chat, and if you don't mind, adding your um, emoji that describes how your day is going. So Sean is packing, my, Matt's been biking, Don's just happy, celebrating. And the, you know what, selfishly, the only reason I put this in here was because I figured out you can use the markdown <laughs> emoji stuff, or not markdown, but like the, you know, shortcut. Keyboard emojis yeah. now, yeah. Colons to put your, so I'm super happy. So I'm just gonna use it all the time now. Now that it's not like a big thing to make an emoji in a Google Doc. So thank you, Google, for making my day better. Thank you, Sophia, wherever you are. Um, okay, let's jump in. So just a reminder, this is actually the last meeting until the first of the, well, I should say the last community meeting until the first of the year. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Um, ex we are not having any meetings December 12th through January 9th, just for an end of year break to give us all just kind of a little breather. Uh, work can still um, go forward on async on slack um, if a working group wants to do that if we want to keep conversations going completely fine does not have to just halt everything all yeah. forward movement and chaos. But um, I see that Sean also is adding a, a getting started with Augur meeting on the 12th because it's so popular. Yeah, there was just a request for from some of the people who've been coming to it to have one more before we shut down and I agreed. Yay. So um, I will make sure to note that in the newsletter as well. But thank you for doing those, Sean. They're, they seem to be working really, really well. Yeah, it, yeah, it's uh, it's been a good it's been good, I think, for the people who are there. And the last video has a pretty complete um, list of things that you do to install the new auger. Fantastic. Um, is that mostly what these workshops entail is um, getting getting right now? It's getting people started. And I think um, that with, with ultimately with the aim of uh, enabling contribute contributions. We also implemented um, the only first timers tag in the Augur uh, issue repository and have committed to if somebody signs up for an issue, we'll, we'll sort of uh, shepherd one individual per week through um, issue resolution and the, you know, the whole process of making development changes to Augur. And that came out of our discussion last week, I think, in the community meetings. <clears throat> yeah, Ruth, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to like remind Sean and Adon that um, we'll be having, I think we're planning a sprint with um, a Pi Data community in Ghana. So yeah, I just want to add that as well. Oh yeah, the, um, the weekend of the 12th, I believe uh, there's, there's somebody I'm communicating with. Yeah, for a sprint, I think it is better trying to type for it. When is it? Uh, we haven't, he, I believe he said that it's not this weekend, but the following weekend. Okay, if uh, somebody wants to drop in when that, is that, so that's um, not confirmed yet? Uh, I'm not yeah, sure. I'm, I have I'm to find the. It's Sean. Like I think it was the tenth of. Is it tenth of September? Let me check that chat again. Um. Well, when you all have it settled, um, let us know. I can absolutely put it in the newsletter. We can, we can do whatever we need to do. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it'll be principally a face-to-face -face event. Oh, it's going to be like an in-person event? No. No, no. Okay. All right. I, <clears throat> Ruth, explain what it really is. Okay. I'm so yeah, It's going to be online. <laughs> it's going to be online. Like it's like a sprint with, um, they have this Pi Data community in Ghana. So it's going to be like an online sprint um, and would connect with Ahmad. Ahmad is um, the, I think, the lead in Pi Data Ghana. So we connect to kind of, plan it more and yeah but that's that's the details we have for now okay sounds great sounds great 
And if there are uh, more details about like how someone once it's like completely settled when you know if people have to register for that or whatever just let us know and we can certainly spread the word. That sounds awesome. Um, okay, any questions about anything else about that. Are all of the slack channel updates about the auger meetings are those correct. Because I know there was some discrepancy in those. You know, the, the like, yeah, I believe the Saturday ones have all been deleted and there should okay. be no more reminders for those. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just double check that because I feel like I saw one once and I, I didn't want to delete it, obviously, but I wasn't sure. So, okay, I'll just double check that. So, are there no Saturday ones, Sean? No, just okay. the, mon the Mondays are what I've been doing. That okay. seems to be working uh, for people. And my comment better. could be just that I was seeing the Monday ones and wondering if those were still going. They are. Yeah. In fact, okay. those of us right. are kind enough to post the videos in okay. the Augur channel. Okay. Thanks. I think I'm a little behind on that. Sorry about that. No, no worries. I'll get caught up. Um, okay. So um, just as a reminder also for our newcomers, so welcome to our newcomers. I do see a few new faces today. So good to see you or relatively new, maybe not brand new, but kind of new. Um, we do have the next onboarding meeting on January 11th. Uh, we are skipping this month because it seemed weird to be like, hey, we welcome to chaos and then we'll see you in, in a month. <laughs> so we just canceled this one, um, just taking a little break. We'll resume those again on January 11th. And just for those who haven't been to one, um, basically, Ruth and I give an overview of what chaos is, all the different kind of moving parts here, because there's a lot going on at chaos. Um, and we kind of help you navigate and figure out where you might want to contribute and what you might want to do next. So that's what the purpose of those meetings are. And we do also have um, these will start again in January, a regular office hours where you can join and just ask whatever question you want, you come and go. Um, this morning we had one and we chatted a lot about hair color and um, other various topics, so it does not even have to be about chaos, you can just come hang out with us that's also valid. Because <laughs> we love it so it's good. Um, okay, the next one on our list is. Uh, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. is there a question yeah. Yes, there is something I just want to chip in for two minutes today is the seat of December. And uh, a tragic event happened here like uh, 20 years ago. I just want if somebody uh, just to tell you 20, like uh, 14 women were killed by a gunman. Can you see? We can see you. Hello? Yes. Yeah, we can see. We see. Yes, so this is a tragic event that we can just remember these ladies, they are engineers. A gunman uh, walked into the school and he just hated women in STEM and shot for death. This is really tragic. So today, sit of December, we are remembering these great ladies. Sorry for cross-posting, it's just a way of uh, putting ourselves to see why we should encourage women in STEM and them. This happened in Montreal at Ecole Polytechnic. Yeah, a guy, an Arab guy, he just he was just smart. He just walked. So sorry if anyone is disturbed. I'm really glad you brought that up, Armstrong. I'm gonna try not to get teary, but um wow, that's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, is there a link or I'm sure there's articles and information on yes. Would you yes, mind posting it here in the minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That would be great. Yes, I'll share a link. Because I would really like to read more about that. I, I was not familiar with that event at all. So yeah. that's also a tragedy because I feel like that's something that should be known and should be remembered. So thank you for bringing that up. Okay. So, okay. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move along. Um, the next item is about the 
um, the discourse migration. So as you know, um, and we were actually talking about this in the Chaos Africa Designers Slack chat this morning, um, Chaos has been using super old listserv mailing lists for um, that have literally not been updated. The UI has not been updated in like 20 years. I don't know. Um, it's very hard to navigate. And we had some newcomers um, that were kind of struggling with the interface and just it's really not clear how to even participate with mailing lists. It's been an ongoing issue for us. So um, we decided a few months ago to migrate from the mailing lists over to discourse. Um, which is an, uh, a forum that we can use and we'll have some it's a little bit different than slack which slack is kind of more of like um, immediate or um, you know more short term conversations, but it's really hard to find if you're looking for something specific and right now our slack. Um, although we might change this, but our slack doesn't keep the history of stuff so yeah i'm working on changing that. <clears throat> yeah, so that will be great. Um, but discourse will let us like just have threads that newcomers can search and we can easily find historical context for things where we don't remember right off or if a newcomer is wondering how something came to be, how the development of a metric came to be, or someone has questions on metrics or really anything, um, we can use discourse for that. So um, quick update, we have been approved for a free open source hosted plan. Um, and which means we don't have to really mess with it except for the administration of it and the moderation of it of our own conversations. Um, but somebody else discourse is going to handle all the other um, server -y kind of stuff and updating it and all that. So that's great news. So now we're in the process of just kind of setting it up and figuring out where it's going to plug into slack or WordPress or how we want to do that. Um, I'm hoping to at least have a first iteration in place when we come back after the first of the year so that we can kind of just all jump in um, and start using it. One kind of caveat with it is that because we're on the open source plan, there are some limitations and one of those limitations is not being able to import any data. So, so we might have to ask people to start a new account, which I'm so sorry for that. We were kind of hoping we could maybe, you know, transfer over some Slack or some mailing list subscriptions already, but I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. So we might have to ask you all to sign up for an, another account in the mini that you have already, but we'll sort that out. Um, I am gonna, there is a thread going in the community repo on GitHub where we're gonna kind of list all the tasks to be done. So if you are interested in helping out with this project, I know a couple of people have stepped up and said they would be interested. So we'll sort it out on, on GitHub, maybe assign some tasks and some issues and things like that. Does anybody have questions about this? I, I don't. I was going to add just one more thing that I think is kind of related to this, and I'm just going to put it in the, in the minutes. This is an example. Um, the to do group does this that I think you can like track Slack discussions in GitHub. I had no idea you could do this. And I believe the reason they do this is so that folks who can't access Slack can see the discussions that are going on. So I I just did, didn't know you could do this, which is kind of interesting to me. Might just be the last, I think that's the last half of the Slack to discourse migration. So it's plausible if you have a thread in Slack and you're an admin or above in Slack, um, you can install a system that allows you to put a icon that says make thread a post, and then it will actually post the thread from Slack onto Discourse, and then from there you can bring it into GitHub. And I think some of the, what they're doing in the to-do group is actually manual versus... Oh, um, it is. The um, mic I, might, I might be wrong on that. I know originally it was it was pretty manual because I also think that they import some of the conversations from some of the private Slack channels okay. and um, strip out like who said what. I'm not sure exactly how it works. It'd be worth talking to Anna to see. I will. I just, when I saw this at like this level, I was like, wow, <laughs> how handy would that be? But okay, I'll do some more investigation. Just especially if it's not any extra work for anybody, if there's a manual component, um, yeah, no. It might be kind of interesting to have that. I'm, I'm wondering how that would work with, um, and maybe this is like too deep into the details of it because that's where my brain tends to go and it's so apologies. Um, but like if we have so many repos and all of the conversations are happening in that repo, 
is that, like would people have visibility into those or like how could you i, I don't mean, know you know what you i mean can, you can create links um i think i think we went we, we've contemplated uh for a long time how to do it um and i suggest we just try something yeah yeah i think that's probably the best <laughs> to see what works for us yeah we don't know. until we do it you don't know how something's gonna go until it goes so yeah, this is really interesting though. I didn't realize that there was that uh, that capability either. So that's awesome. That's really cool. That was it. Bring that up. Okay. Um, the next item on our um, oh, quick quick um, interjection here, just so people know, we usually end these now that we have a chaos con coming up. We're going to end our general meeting at thirty minutes past, so that this uh, so we have this space to kind of um use for committee planning so at 30 minutes past we're going to end the general meeting and then the chaos con committee will stick around for some some discussions that we have to have about the upcoming chaos con so that's what's happening here for those who are new to the call if you're not sure that's what and this isn't always going to be like this it's just temporary so thanks for bearing with us okay next item is the working group risk and the ospo and survey so i'm not sure who put that on Oh, yeah, just um, that during the risk meeting, we discussed the need to or the desire to do some surveying of the landscape to see what others are doing with regards to risk, because obviously there's a lot of activity around security. Um, uh, both uh, Sophia and I have participated in some of the open SSF meetings now, and I put some notes from today's tooling group meeting in um, the, the risk channel. But I just I wanted to sort of make a general awareness that um, we've discussed surveys in the OSPO working group and in the risk working group. So um, if we go forward, well, uh, let's just coordinate a little bit. I'm in both of those groups, so it shouldn't be a problem, but I just wanted to raise awareness that the risk group has some questions about what what people's principal concerns with regards to risk are right now. So Sean, I might um, kind of, I'm gonna put something else in this minutes. Oops, yeah, there we go. This is a discussion that's currently occurring in the to-do group about setting up a chaos. No. What? Well, this, this, is the, oh, this is the OSPO working group inside chaos I'm talking about. Yep, so um, the, We've been having a conversation with, um, oh, so you would just, you would, okay. We would just like to add some risk questions to the OSPO survey that we're coordinating with the to-do group from the OSPO working group. So instead of risk going through creating their own survey, we have a couple of questions we'd like to ask as part of the, the other survey that we discussed in the OSPO working group. Oh, I, I gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like instead of sending two surveys from chaos, let's just ask the couple questions we have uh, in the in the one survey. I got gotcha. same same basic group. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Sean? Okay. So why don't you can go to, I think Venya has the last point before we close and it looks like that got, or. Yeah. Go ahead, so it's Venya. the, it's also the same thing that we've been talking about. Um, while the comms working group is spinning up, which is during the holidays, um, maybe not the greatest planning to be adding new things, but um, for um, chaos casts, we're trying I'm to bad. review <laughs> and then create abridged versions. So uh, if you are willing to volunteer, please, 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 to uh, listen to a, a chaos cast and then give me an entry point or an exit point for a few takeaways that you thought were really valuable, um, I would really appreciate it. And what we're going to do with that is basically pull the takeaways that you find valuable as a community member, put them into a smaller version of that podcast, and then it's going to be available in archives for chaos to use in the future and it will be published for Socially Constructed on the YouTube channel for now. Um, and then we'll have a later home for that um, when the working group is up and running. Cool. 
Cool. Um, I also noticed somebody put on here website yeah. updates. That was just me. So it's just the, to keep people posted, just to kind of on the ongoing conversation. So we're um, the website has been been updated. We're continuing to look at ways to reduce um, text on the site because a lot of the text is you know simply carryover from the last website. So we are looking to continue to streamline that. Um, if you go to this link. I'll put it in the chat. Oops. This is really kind of our, our new look towards our metrics. So if you scroll down just a little bit, Elizabeth, this is how where you can start accessing the metrics via these are via the member the keywords and the topic areas. So if you just click on say organization, these are the metrics that have been tagged with that. Um so this is if you can't if you can kind of see this is kind of reducing the like these were the metrics from risk or these were the metrics from you know evolution it's simply how we have tagged those metrics um, and organized them so they these any metric from across the different working groups uh, could be tagged with organization and they're kind of brought together in that way um if you go back the Go back one more. The and this is to help because we were up to close to 80 metrics and the long list was getting a little bit complex or <laughs> a little bit overwhelming. Um, the there is a proposal right now and an issue if you scroll down just a little bit to add um, two more two more boxes right here. So one would just be show all metrics. So it would actually be a list of the comprehensive list of all metrics, not as categorized. And then the other one would be show all metric models. So we don't have the metric models in here yet. They just even haven't been published, but it would to be to show all the metric model definitions that have been published as well. I like that idea a lot. Um... Um, I, I had a quick question. I think this was brought up before too, as these, um, when you click on a thing, it just has this, it doesn't have the question that was answered. I think somebody brought that up. Do you know, Matt, if that's even a possibility? I know that's probably a question for Kevin, but. Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe that's something that you and I could just look at like through. Figure it out. Yeah. yeah, I just, somebody had brought that up at one of the previous, maybe last meeting or one of the previous meetings of like, that would be really helpful. Just the that's highest like, level like context yeah. on the metric. Yeah. You, yeah. Just to kind of You get... just put it in the excerpts box. And I would actually think that that's very helpful too, because that's going to impact your SEO. Because that's the snippet that Google is going to take for each page. Yeah, it's okay. it's just an excerpts box for each page, okay. and then you ask that block that Kevin made to include the excerpt below. Okay. Um, I see here too this changing URLs from natural language to an ID. I think that that um, decision has been made to do that, um, but sadly we're out of time. <laughs> we're out of time. I know that's a big discussion, but um, I think that that discussion or that is already in progress. I believe. Um, okay. If I'm not mistaken, just because of the. All right. Yeah. I Decision's think it, been made. It it it, it happened. <laughs> well, yeah, just I think it was mostly a need from Augur and software to have that like that easy ID that's not changing and is going to be the same regardless. So yeah. Yeah, um, if we want to connect our tools to our metrics, yeah. Clearly that we need a stable URL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you doing that through a parameter or through the actual core URL? Kevin's doing that through WordPress. I'm not sure exactly what the process is. I just know he's already working on it. So How, however it works, we don't care as long as it yeah. stays there. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, my main concern is just impact on SEO, but I can follow up with him later. Yeah, yeah, there might be some workaround or something we can do there. So yeah. All right. I'm so sorry we have to stop the meeting, um, but we do have some things to discuss on the ChaosCon committee. So if you're on the ChaosCon committee planning, um, please stick around. Everybody else, you're free to go. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. And we will see you next year. What? We'll see you next year. Heart, heart. Have a good end of year. 2023.
Yay, please please say hi on Slack because we'll miss you. I will miss you, I'll miss all your faces. So yay, thanks everybody. I'm gonna stop the recording here.